Hi everyone and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be learning about API Flask, a tool that helps you to build web APIs using Flask and Marshmallow. So according to the documentation, we see that API Flask is a lightweight Python web API framework that's based on Flask and Marshmallow code projects. It's easy to use, highly customizable, ORM, ODM agnostic and 100% compatible with the Flask ecosystem. So we have things such as uh, sugars to the view function such as app.input, app.output and so on. We have automatic request validation and deserialization, response formatting and serialization, open API specification, automatic interactive API documentation, API authentication support with the Flask HTTP or library. We also have automatic JSON response for HTTP errors. So the first thing we have to do is to actually go ahead and install this tool. So I'll do that with pip3 install API Flask. So I'll copy this command and I'm going to open up my terminal right here. I'm using Terminator. So I actually have my folder already opened up for that specific project. I'm going to paste this command and I'll actually have to first create a virtual environment and activate it. So I'm going to use ppnv. So I'll do pip env shell and this is actually going to create a new virtual environment or so let me not even use it I'll just say pip3 python3 minus m then I'm going to just use vm to create myself a virtual environment in here and once the virtual environment has been created I'll activate it with source env bin and then activate and then I'll go ahead and paste our command in here. Seems like it has this dollar sign. So once I've been able to add this, I'll go ahead and freeze this to our requirements to txt file. And once I have froze that to our requirements to txt file, now let's go ahead and set it up. So that we can run our server so when you go back to our code right here since this is based on flask i think it actually provides for us a way that's similar to flask to run our application so the first thing i have to do is to basically create a flask env file that will have flask specific configurations now in this case i'm just simply going to come and say this is going to be your flask env and within here i'll just come and say we're going to have our flask env and let's say our Flask development environment is actually going to be a development. And also, I'll specify our Flask debug to be true. And most importantly, we shall also have to point to where our Flask app is going to be. So we're going to set up the Flask app variable. And this is going to be equal to a file that we may have. So let's just say it's going to be app.py or main.py or whatever you may want to call your file. Now I'm going to set it up as main.py. So after doing this, then I'm going to create our main.py right here. So I'll just come and say main.py and let us go ahead and create our server. So when you go back to the documentation right here, we have an example that shows us that shows us how we can be able to create a simple server. So we now see that instead of creating a Flask instance just like we may do in a normal Flask application, this time we require to create an API Flask instance. So I'll just come and first import it. So I have to import it from API Flask. We shall import our API Flask instance. We actually provided an API Blueprint instance or a Blueprint class that's similar to that of Flask. So I'll go ahead and create our app instance. So I'll say app is going to be called our API Flask. And in here, we shall provide our import name that's going to point to underscore underscore name. Now, the next thing will be to create a route. So, just like we have here, we have a route that says hello and returns a message of hello. So, in this case, I'm just simply going to create something that's the same. I'll say app.get and we shall pass in a URL or our path. And we shall also have a function to handle the request to that path. Now in this case, I'll just say we're going to have index and we shall come and return uh, our message and this message will be hello world. So when I go ahead and save, uh, we can simply go ahead and just run our Flask app with Flask run since we have Flask installed. 
Now this is actually telling us that uh, there dot env or flask env files present but you need to install python dot env now automatically flask would run our app if it was called app dot py or wsj dot py but it's not running it because you need to first read our flask env file so i have to first import our python dot env and i'll just simply copy this command right here and paste it in here So once it's installed, then I'm simply going to call our Flask run, and in this case, it will locate our app as main.py to see that our debug is on and our environment is development. All right, so this is working well. This is working fine. So let us go ahead and make a request to our localhost 5000. So when I go to localhost 5000 right now, we see that our message of hello world is being returned to us. Now, one of the most interesting features of API Flask is it brings an automatic Swagger UI documentation. I think it actually comes with Flask with uh, Swagger documentation as well as Redoc documentation. So let us go ahead and try to access the Swagger documentation. So when you go to localhost 5000 and then you go to the slash docs URL. In this case, we are going to see that's bringing to us this Swagger documentation right here. I'm actually going to be using that for the whole video. So when you try to make a request to our in point we now see a message of hello world being returned to us and also the status code and any other information that is basically present so we have successfully been able to carry out our first request normally in an api we may need to create a database and the database may be persisting our records now api flask boasts of how agnostic it may be to any ORM or ODM we may use. Now for this video, I'm just going to be using SQL Alchemy to create a simple database of tasks. Then we shall carry out our Flask our CRUD functionalities on the tasks. Now let us get started. So I'll just come right here in our terminal. It's actually within our terminal. I'll stop our terminal and I'll begin by installing SQL Alchemy. So I'll say pip3 install sql alchemy and when you install our sql alchemy we shall create our database using sql alchemy so once it's installed we shall freeze it to our requirements so txt and right now this is how our folder looks for now we have all our dependencies now let us go ahead and basically uh, create a database. So I'm going to create a database.py file that will contain everything that we shall need for our database. So I'll just come right here, create a new file, which I'll actually create and call db.py. And this db.py will have everything uh, about our databases. So I'm just going to begin by creating an engine. So if you haven't checked out my SQL Alchemy video, please, I'll leave it up there so that you go ahead and check it now i'm going to begin by saying from sql alchemy we are going to begin by creating an engine so shall import our create engine and create that engine as create engine so this usually takes in a path to a database so in this case i'm going to use sql sqlite but feel free to use any database that you may wish to use so i'm going to begin by specifying that we shall have our database as sqlite and i'll provide the name as let's actually call this database tasks dot db and i also come and provide an argument of echo equals true all these are described in my sql alchemy database video so once i have this then the next thing i can do is to go ahead and also uh, create a session so that session will be uh, helping us to do things such as creating reading updating and deleting to actually help us to query our database most of the time so i'm going to import those so i'll just come here and say from sql alchemy i'm going to import a lot of things so this is actually going to be from the orm so i'm going to import our scoped session as well as our session maker so once you have this then i can go ahead and create our session variable 
So this session is actually going to be a scoped session and it will also take in a, an instance of a session maker and this will be bound to an engine. So I'll say bind is going to be equal to engine which we've created right here. Now once I've done this then the next thing will also be to create our base class that's going to help us to create our database objects. So I'm just simply going to come right here and say from SQL Alchemy dot ext dot declarative I'm going to import our base class actually it's going to be a declarative base and I'll create our class of base which is going to be base and this will be called calling the declarative base so once we have this then I can go ahead and create our database model so to create our database model I'm simply going to come and model out a simple task class so I'll create this as a class of task and here we shall have the id and this id will be an integer now we shall have a content which is going to be text which shall be a string and we can also have a date added and this date added is actually going to be a date time object now once you have that then you can also go ahead and specify things like uh specified uh we can actually provide it's complete which is going to be a boolean and this may be false at the beginning so let us go ahead and actually turn this into a database table so i'll begin by creating a class and this class is going to be our task class which is going to inherit from our base class and here we're going to actually first define the name of the table by using the danda table name and here we shall specify this to be tasks and then I'll go ahead and provide the ID which is going to be equal to our column. So I'll begin by importing that as well. So I'll go and say from SQL Alchemy, we're going to import our create engine, then shall import our column. And then we shall import things such as the integer field, we shall import the string, the date time. as well as the boolean so once we've done this then i'm going to go ahead and what i have to do is to say id and then we shall say that this is going to be a column i know i'm not typing well but this is going to be our column which will be an integer and this will also be our primary key shall so say that we're going to have our primary key being equal to true now we're also going to have our so this will be our ID, our content, and this will also be a column, which will be a string. So this is going to be a string. And this string, we can actually define its length. So let's say that the max length will be 500. And we also don't want it to be now, so we shall provide the constraint of nullable equals false. All right, so now we can also provide that date added. And this will be a column, which will be a date time. And this date time, we shall have a default of date time. So I'm actually going to import a date time class. Come on, let's and say from date time, we are going to import our date time class. And once you put this in, we shall have our default being date time dot utc now, meaning the current data that post creation or our task creation. Now I think we are done. The one we have been missing is that is complete boolean attribute. So I'll say is complete, and this will be a column, and this will be a boolean. Uh, this boolean is going to have a default and this default will be equal to I think we've imported that default so let me just remove that then uh, we're going to have a default and this default is actually going to be false all right so we've created our database table now it's going to go we're going to actually go ahead and create 
this table in our database. So we point it to our database, which is going to be task.db, and this is going to be located within our current folder. So I'm just simply going to come here and create a simple method that is going to be taking itself and will return a string representation of all our database of actually a single database object. So I'm just going to say return and here we shall say f and then here we shall have task and we shall specify self dot let's say id and save. So let us go ahead and use our database table to go ahead and create this database. Now a lot of people complain about how I don't format my code and I later learned how to use black to format my code so that it looks well organized. So I'm just going to come right here and install black. I'll say pip3 install black. So this has installed black in my virtual environment. I'll freeze it. And then after doing that, then all I have to do is to pull up my terminal right here in VS Code. And then what I have to do is to actually call Python 3 minus m then black then i call the whatever module i may want to format now in this case it may be db.py and this will change the format to format my code in a very much organized way now away from that let us go ahead and create this table so we are going to create this is by calling base dot metadata dot shall call a create all function and we shall bind this to an engine. I'll just say bind and say equals to our engine. When I save, I am going to pull up our terminal. And here I'll come and say Python 3. Uh, this is going to be db.py. And this is going to create our simple database of tasks. Now, since you specified equal being equal to true, we can now see that our tasks have been created. And this is our database schema for our simple tasks database. All right, so I'm going to change that because now we are sure that our database has been created. I'll simply leave it to this and let us go ahead and now do the interesting stuff. So now that we have our database created, let us go ahead and basically create objects or help to populate our database with our API be able to retrieve, update, create, and all the required functionalities. So I'm going to create all the routes responsible for that in our main.py file right here. So we're going to have the following. So I'm going to create a simple doc string. And in here, we're going to have a get method. So here, we are going to specify our endpoint as slash tasks. And this will be getting all, get all, here we shall be getting all tasks. Now we shall also have in, be having post, post, which is the method, and this will also be on the tasks endpoint or the tasks URL, and this will be for creating. Uh, so let's say create a task, and we shall also have. Let's say if we are going to have one for getting or retrieving a task. So this is going to be slash task. And this will be slash uh, task ID. And here, this will actually be for uh, getting a specific task or retrieving a specific task by the ID. So, shall say get task by ID. So, this is actually going to help me in the way I'm going to name my functions. So, we shall also have one for putting which is going to update a task. So just simply going to come and copy this. So here I shall just be updating a task. And then we shall also have one for deleting. So it's actually going to be so similar to this. So here, I'm just going to be saying delete and shall have here, we are actually going to have uh, delete task. Now, now that you have this, let us go ahead and write these routes right here. So when I save, 
I'm going to go right uh, on our documentation. And we see that the way we create this is by using app.get, app.post, app.patch, put, delete, and whatever HTTP methods you may have on a specific route. So I'm going to begin by creating one for getting all tasks. So I'll begin by saying that is going to be app.get. And this is going to be on our slash tasks URL. So I'll define our function as get all tasks. I'll pass this for now. And now I'm also going to do the same thing for, so I'll say at app.get and in here we shall say this is going to be on our slash tasks and we shall define our function as create a task and we shall pass this for now now we are also going to come and say app.get and in this case it's going to be for retrieving a task by the id so i'll just come and say task and then slash task id but this task ID is actually going to be an integer, so I'll specify that in our URL. Now we're going to create a function which is going to be getting task by ID. So I'll copy this and paste it right here. Then we shall have to pass in our task ID. So actually it's going to be our task ID, and then I'll pass this also. So once we do that, then we're actually going to have this being the same for the other routes. What will change will be the name of the function and the method. So I'm going to paste this and also paste this. Now this is actually going to be one for putting. And here we shall change the function name from that to update task. So I'll just come right here and say this is going to be for our update task. In here we shall change the method name to delete. And we shall also have to change uh, this from whatever it is to delete task so I think we are done uh, creating our endpoints so when you go back to our documentation right here and refresh it's actually our server not running so I'll clear our terminal and then I'll try to run with flash cron when you go back this side and refresh you now see that all our endpoints have been created. Now, API Flask provides for us a way in which you can be able to create column serializers or classes that are schemas. And these are actually built on top of Marshmallow to help us serialize and deserialize our data. So I'm going to be creating them. And the way I'm going to be creating them is by creating the input schemas and output schemas so input schemas are those that are going to be responsible for us carrying out post requests where we are sending data to our api and those that are also going to help us to get data from our database and return it to us as json so i'm going to call those up output schemas now i'm going to come right here and i'll create a simple file so i'm just simply going to come and call it schemas dot py and once I have schemas.py, now I'll go ahead and basically create our first schema. So I'll begin by importing our schema class. Now this schema class is actually the Marshmallow schema class that we are provided by Marshmallow. So I'll just come here and say that we're going to say from API Flask schemas, we are going to import our schema class. And once you have this, then I'll begin by creating our output schema for our tasks so i'll create a class sorry for this so this class is going to be our task output schema and this is actually going to be a schema so once you have this then you can go ahead and maybe define all the fields that you want here so these fields are actually the same marshmallow fields that marshmallow provides for us now I'll just come right here and say that we are going to import our fields so i'll just come and say from api flask we are going to import our fields and what i have to do is to define whatever fields that we have now i'll simply refer to the model that we created in here so we have i'll actually just 
copy this and paste it somewhere here so that you can be able to refer to it now each time we shall be outputting once you output the id the content the date added as well as the this complete boolean now all i have to do is to basically add this so i'll say that our id is going to be fields dot integer and now we are also going to have our content so in this case we're going to have our content and this will also be fields dot so in this case it will be string and here we can have various attributes so we're also going to come and provide our date added and this will be fields dot the date time field and this will be a date time field now we can also provide that is complete and this will be a fields dot boolean okay so when i go right here i'm going to say class and i'll say we're going to also create one for inputting this will allow us to basically carry out things such as our update and our post requests so i'll just come and say uh, task input and this is going to be our task input schema and this will be a schema so once you have this then all i have to do is to provide maybe the content because that's the only kind of data that we may need to pass to our api and in this case shall have fields dot so in this case we shall have fields dot string just like we actually created it here and maybe is complete which is a boolean so i'll just come and say it's complete and here we shall just say fields dot uh, string actually it's going to be a boolean <laughs> so once you have this we have uh all the attributes that you may pass on to this boolean all right so we may set this up to be required so we may say required equals to true and we may also pass in uh we may pass in actually let's create two uh input schema so i'm going to create one for just creating a task and one for updating a task now this is going to be a task create schema and it's going to be one for creating a task so a task by default is not complete to be false now i can also go ahead and create one for task update schema and this will also be a schema but this will have two fields it's going to have the content and here uh, we may have the task create and we may have also we may also actually also have that is complete boolean so mean say it's complete which is going to be field stored boolean and here we are also going to make this be required so i'll say required oh no it's going to take in required and this will be required equal to true all right so once we have this then let us go ahead and try to return our database model objects now at this point in time we haven't populated our database with any data yet but we're going to use our api to achieve that so i'm going to go to our main.py and i'll first import our schema so i'll just get from schemas we are going to import our post actually it's going to be our task create schema our task output schema and our task update schema now that you have this then the next thing is actually going to be to get all our tasks so remember our tasks are from our database this time so we're going to use our session class or our session object that we created in our db.py right here it's actually here to help us to query for all our tasks now i'm going to come and do this so i'll first specify that we are going to output our tasks using our task output schema so we need to come and say app dot out oh sorry for this this is going to be app dot out put and in this case shall provide our schema which is going to be our task output schema and once you have this then you shall have to query for our post so i'm just going to come and say posts so i'll have to import our session class and shall have to do this from uh, db we are going to import our session 
and once you have this end all I have to do is to save session in this case it will be session dot query and shall pass in the class or the entities and in this case our entity is going to be the task class and I'll come and say session dot query then I pass in our task and in this case I'll say dot all meaning we want all our tasks now if you to picture this what you want to return are our posts but let me show you what's going to happen when I come and say return posts and save when you go to our UI right here and refresh in this case we are going to we are actually lacking that that URL that returns our task I don't know what's happening so let me try to fix that so you have get all tasks and this is actually for getting all tasks for creating a task and this is actually <laughs> a post method I think I made a mistake here so let me change this to post now in a camera right here and refresh we have two URLs one for getting and one for creating so when I go to get all tasks and try it out and execute we now see that we are being returned an empty response body but this response body is not in the way we want because it's a dictionary or a javascript object what we want is to actually get a list of tasks now i've been working out a hacky way for me to be able to do this and i'll share that with you so since our schemas are marshmallow objects we can actually use the same approach to return our to return our objects so the way i'll do that is by coming right here and all i have to do is to say uh that you're going to have our schema be equal to our task output schema and here this is actually the instance now we can also create a result and this result will be a result of passing our data through the schema so i'll just come and call it dump method and specify what we want to dump and in this case are we, they are going to be posts now i'll create a separate video on marshmallow and how we can be able to achieve this so once you have this then all you can do is to maybe return the result and when i save and try to execute this once again it's actually haven't executed this time it's going to return a response body so i think i'll have to refresh and uh, when I try it out, execute, it's going to return the same thing. I wonder why. So I think I'll have to use JSONify to return this since it's the same as Flask. So I may try to use JSONify for this. So I'll say from Flask, import JSONify. And then I'll go ahead and return JSONify the result. Oh, sorry. So it's going to be JSONify and then the result. So in a save, go back here and refresh. I'll try to get this. So in a trade out and execute, it's actually going to return the same response body. And I think it's because we specified our task output schema right here. So when I remove this, I think it will work the same. So let me try to execute. It's actually returning the same thing. I don't know. I think I'll have to refresh. So when I try it out and execute this time, it's actually returning the same thing. Uh, I don't know if I did something wrong on that URL. So anyway, let me first focus on populating our database with some tasks. So when I go and try to populate this, actually, I think it's returning this because when we are dumping a list, we actually have to specify many equals to true or I'm forgetting so when I go and try to execute right now it's returning a list and this is amazing all right so let us go ahead and try to create our task so creating our task is going to be as simple as using our task create schema so when you are creating we have to first specify the input so I'll just come and say up dot inputs then specify a schema and this case is going to be our post Oh, actually it's going to be our task create schema so it's going to be our task create schema and we shall have to pr to pass in data so this will stand for the data that comes from the client to the api 
And once you have this, then you shall have to get our content since that's the only field that we have and need to create our task. So I'll come and create our content and this content is going to be equal to so our content is going to be data dot get since it's going to be a dictionary then we shall get the key of content and once you have this then we shall use this to create a new task so when you come here we have imported that task class now say new task and in this case our new task is going to be task and this will have our content which is going to be equal to the content and once you have this then all we need to do is to go ahead and use our session save this so i'll say session dot add and in this case we shall add a new task and then we shall go ahead and finally save this to a database by saying session dot commit now once you have this then all i have to do is to return the newly created task so i'll do that with return new task and once I've done this, then all I have to do is to go ahead and specify which schema we're going to use to return this. So I'll just come and say at app dot output, and this is going to be our task output schema. So I'll refresh and then try to go and create a task. So I'll go to our UI right here. I'll refresh because we have provided input and output schemas. So now I go and say post. I'll say try it out. Now we have sample content here because we've defined the kind of input we want. So I'm just going to come and provide our input as task one. When I execute, we now see that our task has been created, but we haven't specified our status code. So let me go ahead and also specify the status code. So I'll say comma and then 201 because that's the response status code for creating a resource. So when I go right here, I'm going to provide task two. And when I execute, in this case, we see that the 201 status code has been returned to us. So it seems like we now have our database being populated with samples. So if we go and get all our tasks, so I'm going to clear this and close it for now. When I get all tasks, I'll try it out and when I execute, this time we see that we're getting a list of our tasks. Now, this is working and this is amazing. So let us try to work on one that's going to actually return one individual item. So what I'll do is to go within our code right here and first query for that specific task. I'm going to come here and say task is going to be equal to session. In this case, we're going to say session.query and shall pass in our task now what we shall need is to filter by the id so i'll just say filter by and then you specify that you are filtering by the id attribute and if the id is equal to the task id oh sorry for this so this will be task id then we shall need the first object that basically has that id and that will be our task now we shall just simply come here and return the task so i can pass in a condition here by saying uh, if if task is not none so if this task exists then we can simply return the new task and then return a status code of 200 or a bot with a status code of 404 not found so i'll go ahead and import our uh, bot this is actually also similar to flask so i'll just come and say which are a bot with a status code of 404 all right so once i have this then the next thing is actually going to be to try this out but we haven't actually provided the output schema so i'll do that with app dot output and i'll provide this with task output schema so when i save and go back right here i'll refresh and when I go uh, where we get a task by the ID, I'll try it out and provide our task ID as one. When I execute, we now have our task of ID one. So let us try an ID of 10, which does not exist. And now we see that we are aborting with a 404 status code, and this is not found. All right, so when I clear, we now see 
that we now see in that we can be able to get our task by the ID. So let us work on the remaining endpoints that is for the one for updating and then for deleting a task. Now I'm going to begin with one for updating. So this takes in the task ID but also needs to take in the data that comes from the request. And in this case, let's say if we're updating the content, this is going to be we actually need to also provide the input schema so it's going to be upload input and in this case we're going to use our task update schema and here in case we are getting the content it shall be data.get and we shall specify that this will be the content and we shall also specify that we shall have our is complete being equal data.get and this case it will be is complete so once you have this then we shall need to get the task we want to update so task to update is going to be equal to so what do we need we need session it's actually going to be equal to the same query that we did here so i'll just copy this and what i have to do is to paste it in here and once I'm done with that, then we shall need to basically update this. So I'll just come and say task to update dot is complete. And this is going to actually be equal to is complete. And we shall also update that. So just going to say task to update dot content. And this is actually also going to be equal to our content. Now that you have this, we shall just use our session to save this. So we shall say session.commit. And this will finally save our changes to our database. Now, another thing we shall do is to return a response. So I'm just going to come and say return. And in this case, we shall have to return the task. So I'll use our output schema. So I'll say app.output. And then we shall provide that task output schema. Now simply come right here and say return, and we shall return the task that we have updated. So I'm going to save that. So let's try to basically update. I'll refresh our UI, and when I go to where we updated task, I'll go and try it out. So we need an ID, so we have an ID of one. So right here, I'm actually going to come and say that we shall have our content as let's say task uh, 10 and when you try to save this as is complete equals true let me actually try it and now we see that our task has actually been complete so when you go back right here and try to get that specific task of id1 so I'll provide the ID as one and then execute. We now see that our task has been updated and our is complete is equal to true. So at this point, we've been able to carry out most of the routes, but we need to delete a task. So let us implement that. So I'm just going to come here and provide our task that we want to, up to delete. So I'll say task to delete, and this is going to be equal to our query. And then shall simply use our session to delete that task so in this case it's going to be our task to delete and then we shall just simply go ahead and commit that and then return an appropriate status code so in this case we shall return a message or well, let's say deleted and provide a status code of 204 no content all right so let us try to delete a task so when i go back here and try to uh, refresh I'll go and delete a task and what I have to do is to try this out so let's say we are deleting a task of ID 2 and when I execute in this case we see that our task has been deleted and its status code of 204 is being returned so when you try to get all tasks when I execute uh, we see that we only having one task which means that our tasks 
have been we have actually gone ahead to delete a task at this point we've been able to look at some basic features like uh, schemas uh, how we return responses and requests and how we can use our automatic swagger ui documentation another thing is this api flask tool allows us to basically create a read doc documentation so when i go to our slash read doc url in this case we shall see a documentation of our api but in this case it will be with read doc now these are not the only tools that are supported by api flask there are actually other tools that are supported by api flask that if you go to that documentation you can be able to check them out and read more about them i'll leave the documentation in the description below and these are the documentations that you may have for all our endpoints with this clean redoc ui now another thing that's important is api flask allows us to carry out the uh, authentication using the flask http auth library now i'm not going to cover that in this video but i'll leave the link to that to that in the description and perhaps i'll create a video on flask http auth and we look at the various ways it helps you to authenticate with your api if you've enjoyed this video please leave a like don't forget to subscribe if you're new Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.